Hi, welcome. If I ask you a question, I say the word relationship. What do you hear? Well, obviously there's pictures of friends, of your spouse, of your children. Um, that constitutes relationship for you. But if I say this phrase and I say relationship with God, what do you hear? You see, um, I want to tell you a story. Uh, a great American writer, a guy who I respect, he told his, his story of how he came to be a Christian. He was at university and a, f a friend came to him and said, Listen, man, do you know Jesus? So he said, Yeah, I know Jesus. Uh, so he said, No, no, I'm not asking you if you know Jesus. Do you know Jesus like you know your mother? And this guy was really rocked by this because he knew the answer was no. Now that may sound a little bit of a far-fetched uh, statement to you, but I want to, to give you a little bit of a, a background to this statement uh, from parables that the Lord Jesus told. In Luke 13, Jesus told of a, a parable of a feast where eventually the people... Uh, when the doors were closed, there were people standing on the outside and they knocked and they said, let us in, let us in. You taught in our streets, we ate with you. And Jesus responded, he said, I never knew you. He also told in Matthew 7 verse 2, from verse uh, 21, he told that uh, many people will on that day tell him, say, Lord, Lord, have we not done miracles in your name? Have we not done great deeds in your name? He says, and I will answer them, go away from me, you who work iniquity. I never knew you. Furthermore, the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25, you know it. When the five foolish virgins eventually came, and the bridegroom had already shut the door with the five wise uh, virgins. They knocked on the door and they said, Sir, sir, open for us. What was, his, what was the response of the bridegroom? He said, I never knew you. And you know the, the, the word that is used in the Bible for knowing is not the intellectual uh, word that we have of knowing. It's a deep, intimate a word that describes the intimate relationship between a husband and a wife, that, that deep knowing. And that is what, what, what Jesus uh, was talking about. And you see the implications of these parables and these portions of Scripture. First of all, it's not directed to unbelievers. It's directed to believers. And you know, that gets scary because that means that there's many people who regard themselves as Christians and yet they do not have that sort of relationship with God that eventually in the final, final scene of, of, of eternity they will be able to stand before God and God says, but I never knew you. And you see, that is why the concept of a relationship is important. A relationship is not to, to um, come to a place where I can tick off a box and say, yes, I have a relationship. It's not sort of complying with a certain demand. Um, a relationship is really something intimate that has to be worked at, that takes time, and that grows and develops. So if we were to, to define then a relationship, how should we define it? Uh, now we've already defined and said, okay, what is it not? It's not a box of thinking with uh, theological or religious margins and uh, that I can, can put in all the do's and don'ts which qualify me as a, as a believer. No, that's not, that's not a relationship. Uh, it's good to have a library of thinking uh, that you can draw from when you try to explain what you believe. But the relationship is really something which is very deep and intimate. It's, <clears throat> I would say it is a spiritual acquaintance on the inside. 
that redefines my thinking in such a way that it expresses itself in every aspect of my soul and in eventually determines the way I act and live. Uh, there's, a, there's a dependence on God that's built into this thing. And, um, you know, if you think that's, that's a bit far, just listen to this. Uh, in in, in uh, Galatians 5, uh, Paul writes, he says, the fruit of the Spirit. Now that means that the natural outcome of this intimate relationship with God's Holy Spirit on my inside, and now listen, listen whether you hear anything uh, pertaining to thinking, uh, pertaining to emotions, pertaining to soul in this. He says that the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. You know, it's uh, the... the once again, it, it's, it's, it starts with loving God and it ends in loving my neighbor. Uh, a, but the focus is not the effort that I put into changing, it's the effort that I put into the relationship. Now somebody may look at me and say, yeah, but what about you? You know, you're not always that patient, you're not always that kind, and it's true. But you know the fact that I am, I may be lacking in the way these things are shown in my life is not an indication or a license for me to change my philosophy, to change the philosophy which says that this is the way I am is acceptable. It's not an invitation or a, a, a freedom to a rewrite a theology which would explain why I'm okay. No, it's, it's an invitation to go deeper into a relationship. And we must, whatever our the, the, theological thinking is, it must be able to stand that final test of standing before God and God knowing us. So the question is, how do I enter into that relationship? What do I practically do to build that relationship? First of all, I think it's very obvious that it starts with being born again. It starts with that, that amazing thing that happens on your inside when you come to the place that you unreservedly accept Jesus Christ for who He is and for what He did for you. And God responding with putting His Holy Spirit on your inside and you developing eyes and ears for God, and God literally becomes your Father. It means that we have to take the lid off from our thinking in terms of what does it mean to love God. We have to unlearn religion and learn relationship. You see, religion consists in... Um, what I, the way I must act to please God, what I must do to be what I think God wants me to be. When the relationship consists in accepting His acceptance of me on the basis of what He did for me on the cross of Calvary, it requires my absolute honesty. I cannot come to God and hold stuff behind my back and say, God, I'll give you this, but I'm holding something behind my back. It requires absolutely honesty. It requires absolutely agreement with God. What God says is wrong is wrong. What God says is right is right. What God says about my life, that's what's going for my life. And then finally, like any other relationship, if you want to build a relationship with anyone, you have to spend time. Time in prayer, time in reading His Word, time in meditation, in other words, time that you just allow God to, those things that you've heard and that you've seen and that you've read, that it sink in to your life and that, you, that, that your mind is reprogrammed and recalibrated to think 
the, the thoughts of God and to do the, the, the life that God wants you to do. So I really hope that this encourages you. And, you know, if you, um, if you in any way think differently, uh, just make sure that you can define what you believe. Make sure that what you believe will stand the test of ultimately being known by God. Thanks for listening and God bless you.